Hi, I'm Kevin Finch, director of Westbound, and I'm here in the place where the magic happened for this film, and that's Jim Hall's edit suite. And we're here to introduce a new segment of Further Westbound, the continuation of the documentary on our YouTube channel. And today, we're going to talk about Slash. Slash, you say? Well, that's interesting because that's been the number one feedback we've received is, yeah, he's a nice guy and he's a great guitar player and he's a rock and roll Hall of Famer, but why is Slash in a documentary about a jazz guitarist? I think this little segment you're about to see in a conversation with Wes's son, Robert Montgomery, will answer that question and you'll see that, that Slash is a pretty thoughtful guy and open to new musical ideas and I think you'll appreciate all that. And one thing you may note in the shot is a guitar, a very particular guitar, and I'll tell you more about that instrument after I show you this clip. Uh, is it, how, how did you come well, about that? Um, I just remember, okay, initially, you know, it was just hearing his name in mm -hmm. the pantheon of yeah. guitar, great guitar players, right? And uh, I never, you know, I remember it, but I didn't pay that much attention. And then over time, his name came up a lot more, and as I got more into guitar, mm -hmm. a lot of people were influenced by him. But these are guys that I knew. Well, one of the guys I really dig is George Benson, and George Benson yeah. was a, mm -hmm. a huge Wes Montgomery uh, sure radio acolyte, right? <laughs> but, uh, and there was other guys, and Steve Lukather. And, mm -hmm. um, anyway, and at some point, I got turned on to f uh, four or six. Yeah. Four on six. Four on six, right? And there was some licks on there, and I was like, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> you yeah. know, this is yeah. really cool. And so then and then I started to investigate it a little bit more later on, like mm -hmm. I, after I learned. I mean, this wasn't that long ago when I actually yeah. first okay. heard that. And, uh, and then I started learning some of these licks and mm -hmm. doing it by ear, right? But Why? then, but then I, I got a hold of some tablature. Mm -hmm. And he had some really sort of different, especially for me, cause being a rock guy, right. different ways of going about finding these notes, and it just mm -hmm. became really interesting. Yeah. And I started listening to him a lot more. But the thing was, is that I was, it appealed to me because it was very bluesy. Yeah. So you had all the trappings of, of, mm -hmm. of real jazz with a lot of crazy passing tones, and you was a lot of intricate chord structure underneath, you know, the, the, right. the, the guitar leads are going along with these chords. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but for some reason, it just seems so effortless and bluesy and soulful yeah. compared to a lot of jazz yeah. that I, you know, had experienced that mm -hmm. I, I got really sort of like, oh, this guy is really great, <laughs> you know? And it just changed yeah. my, my attitude towards jazz guitar. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's funny because um, my, I, I just learned that, I knew my dad played other instruments. But um, my aunt told my uh, Uncle Monk, which they call Monk Montgomery, I mm -hmm. call him Uncle Bill, the bass player. She told uh, her son, they were having an argument. They got in an argument. He wasn't for sure, but it had something to do with bass licks mm -hmm. because my dad could play the bass better than he could. So he, they were at it. My dad wanted to play a certain way and... He was, I uh, guess he was saying, no, I ain't doing it. He was like, look, man, this is how you do it. And he picked the bass up and started playing. Well, down. I mean, I mean, one of the great things about Wes's soloing is that he plays, I mean, I, I think that the thing that he's most famous for is everything's double noted, mm -hmm. right? And so he's actually playing single lines, yeah. you know, um, and then obviously f with the octave as well. But those single lines, I mean, yeah. he can do them pretty quickly, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's all over the place. Yeah. So I could... If you think about bass, it's very similar fingering. Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, you, and saying that, so how did his technique, is it the chords, the single notes, the octaves, or just the combination? Um, it's of a combination of stuff. This is the fun part. Um, because, he, okay, so in, the, in the, the double note stuff, I mean, it is so fluid. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy doing... Uh, leads with you know where you're doing the octave on every note mm -hmm. um and he does it so effortlessly and it's all up and down the neck and it's a um it's, it's so melodic right yeah. um it's hard to it, it sounds effortless but if you were to try and do it mm -hmm. it takes it takes a lot of yeah. skill and practice to really yeah. and then and even then we'll come to the fluidity that he has because it's so natural wow. and i think that's one of the coolest things about it is it's very him it's very 
part of his personality is very natural. So yeah. in other words, you hear a lot of guitar players learning licks and they learn how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. But this just sounded like it emanated from him. Yeah, yeah, the inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That so that's, that's the appealing part of it. Yeah. And then on top of that, he had such a great tone. And that tone, which, you know, like um, from watching him play, he played a lot with this fleshy part of his thumb. Mm -hmm. And so there was a certain kind of uh, attack that he had mixed with the, the, the way that he fingered. And it just was a very unique and mm -hmm. cool sound. Yeah, because, you know, he, he didn't have a fingerprint. Mm. His his thumb was as smooth as glass. Oh, I could imagine. We used to rub it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we used to rub it all the time. Yeah. You know, you don't remember when I met you? Do you remember meet me? I'm trying to remember exactly where we were it was at that we a. Met. I remember meeting distribution you, but... party at Century City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We took that picture, and he reached over and he said, "I'm trying to buy everything your dad has out there." <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. So is it? Do you feel? Do you still? feel the same way oh, about yeah. the more, how you did that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The more you listen to him, the more you discover, mm -hmm. you know, um, like, uh, you know, as time goes on, I get more and more into it, <laughs> right? And I've, I've learned a lot more of it since yeah. the last time I saw you. Okay. You know, yeah. and, and I, I, it's, it's funny because I find particular phrases, you know, that he does. Because I think, yeah. more, for me, I more enjoy just listening to him. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try and be him. Or, right. You're not going to hear me do a jazz record anytime soon. But some of his phrases and some of his, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're very vocal, very yeah. lyrical, and they'll appeal to me. So I'll, I'll go in and pick up, you know. Some of them. And sometimes I won't even apply them to what I do because I don't have anything where it comes to me to do it. Yeah. But I love checking it out and figuring mm -hmm. out how he did it. And sometimes some of the stuff he, he plays, especially some of the um, the actual octave stuff, right. um, I will apply it in what, mm -hmm. I, what it is I'm doing. You might or might not recognize it as yeah. such, but mm -hmm. it's there. Yeah, usually when somebody's playing it, yeah, I've listened to it. Now, I wasn't a fan of my dad's at all. No. Because he's just my dad. Yeah, no, I what have a to mean, You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, when I realized he was famous, heck, I was, I was a grown man. Yeah. You know, but I was a... Pat Muffini was like my dude, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, he was my dude. Benson. And the funny thing was is that my dad had Benson's music in his, his album collection. Because yeah. he had an album collection. And so I was, you know, I guess like every other kid, who's, who's really after their own dad, you know? Yeah. And, and that's how I was. But, you know, I, at one time I, I picked a guitar up, and uh, my, I remember my mother saying, I, is he going to pick that thing up? You know, I was an athlete, so I didn't care. I put the thing down. And then I went to uh, me and um, Rit Lee Rittenauer put this um, scholarship fund, international scholarship fund together. Mm -hmm. And it was in, of all places, Big Fork, Montana, you think, well, what's out there but animals? <laughs> so we go out there. It was really That's... nice. It was really nice out there. And um, so they had this beginner's guitar class. and I, So I took it. It was a workshop. And I was sitting there, and I, and I strung this guitar, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do this. <laughs> Because for me, um, I knew that I would be in the shadow, and I, what would I be trying to do? Am I really playing this for me, or am I really trying to be Wes, trying to be my dad? Right. And I really realized, you know, I was a fan of his, and really a big fan. So I put his shoes on the shelf, and like you said, you just like listening to him. Yeah, I just like listening to it. Is it my dad. It's you know, I mean, all great guitar players and great musicians in general. Mm -hmm. What's great about them is not so much. Um, I mean, for me, not so much the technique or the technical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. It's how much of their personality comes out, yeah. or how much of the music just sounds like all of a sudden you're listening to a person, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, an yeah. individual, and you know, Wes Montgomery is that kind of kind mm -hmm. of player where um, when you listen to it, it just sounds like somebody expressing themselves, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. which is the coolest. Good stuff. Great to hear from Slash. Interesting perspective and nice story from Robert in there too. Hope you enjoyed that. Now, what about that guitar? That is a Gibson L5 
It is a custom Wes Montgomery L5. So Wes played an L5 for the last few years of his career, uh, uh, several of them over those years, but this one was not one he played, but it's one that the Gibson Guitar Company has put out as a special edition with his name right on the bridge of the guitar. It's pretty cool. And thanks to Gibson for letting us have that as a prop in this and some other interviews. So anyway, that's uh, a little another story from the ar archives of Westbound. And I hope you can join us again. And if you like this segment, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.